Hey, what's going on? This is day four of 30 days to 2,500 bucks. As we move forward, this is going to intensify. So with that, I'm going to jump into it because my goal is here. Well, before I get too carried away, the goal here is to help you make money fast as possible. So this is an action based course. It's a lot of action. There's a lot of activities. And if you do the work, you will make money. So with that, let's jump into it. We're going to do this every day. I'm old school. I went to a school when you can pledge allegiance to the flag. People can pray in school. So since this is the course, this is a pledge. I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. Yes, someone urged me to change that because I had it as I all in. I thought it was funny, but it's like, no, change it. So I changed it. All right, let's jump into it. Yesterday, there were some activities. There are people who are here from yesterday who sold something. You have two businesses now. Kind of scary, right? Um, how long did it take to make that sale? Because this is the thing with all businesses. I don't care what you're doing, who you're doing it with. If you're not making the sale of your product or service, you don't have a business. You don't have a business. You're you're out of business. It's just you have something you can talk about. So the goal yesterday, well, one of the tasks was to go through your list of things that you created, pick something, and go out there and sell it. The reason I'm doing this part of the course like that is I used to work for a company by the name of Renacrate. Their maxim was we're a sales-based organization and many of the activities that I created are coming from that experience of being with Running Creek because it was a little scary it was a little painful at times but once I started doing the work and following the program they had and I'll tell you what it was I was inside sales my goal was to make 250 calls per week 50 calls a day however these are the stipulations if you call someone and got a voicemail, that didn't qualify as a call. If you call someone and you got the assistant, that was not a call. A call was reaching a decision maker, someone that can say, yes, you can come for an appointment. If it didn't fit that criteria, it wasn't a call. So to make the 250 calls per week, I actually had to make about 500, some weeks 600. And as I went through the activity, because there was one day that I had finally hit plan. I had met my quota and I had called like 700 people. Uh, my voice was ragged, my fingers hurt. It was a long week. So I actually went online and ordered a book on cold calling. Got the book a few days later, read it in one sitting and just started applying the stuff. And within two weeks, I was hitting plan and I was making, and they didn't know this, I was making about 100 calls. 100 calls, 150. So I was able to hit plans and do less work because as you go through these techniques, as you go through these exercises, you're going to get better and better and better. And you're going to start seeing how you can make your hustle better. And as you get better, you'll make more money. You'll be more confident. So that's why this course is designed that way. So buckle up, kids. It's going to be, it's on. All right. This, um, is something that just uh, I, I inserted because I, I did this days ago but I inserted this because right now I'm in Atlanta and there are many people up in the north who are laughing like oh they're so dead the city shut down actually right now and this isn't a laughing matter there are people in Charlotte who are actually stuck on the interstate right now in Charlotte and the last time it happened here in Atlanta I had people staying with me this is uh, a winter storm is not a joke regardless of where it happens and I do remember New York and New Jersey getting shut down last year by a storm and people pissed at Bloomberg for not plowing certain streets on time. So essentially, anytime someone gets put in a position where they can't do what they need to do for themselves or their family, it's not a laughing matter. And um, based on what I'm seeing, these winter storms are coming more and more frequent. They used to be big gaps. 
We had one in 2011. Here it is, 2014. We had a little stuff last year. It's just, I think this stuff is coming more and more often. But the bigger picture item I want to discuss is the city shut down. People are at home. Kids are happy. Yay, no school. And I'm, I'm still making money. I'm still making money because that is the beauty of a home hustle. Even if you have a job, even if you have a business, you still need something that you can do from home that will make you some money. I don't care if it's just 500 bucks a month, a thousand, whatever. That's that's money you can put into your 401k or your SEP or whatever. I think everyone needs to be in that position to learn how to take care of themselves independently of a job. It is one of the most powerful gifts you can give to yourself and your family. So I want you to think about this. You know, winter storm, big penis in the sky. There's a lot of things out there that if you're not positioned for, because like the thing is, if I tried to start this business today, you know, this wouldn't be happening. But since I laid these seeds in 2009, you know, they're sprouting and they're sprouting large and there's beautiful fruit and it's juicy and it's mm, tasty. So as you sit here today and you're going through this, you should really, really think about starting a home business. I mean, there, there's a lot of things that you can do. A lot of things. All right. Let's jump into it. Day four. This is something that I've always known, and this is another lesson from Rena Crate. Um, you got to have a customer list. You've got to develop that list. You've got you. It's it's imperative. If you take nothing else away from thirty days to twenty five hundred dollars, this should be their biggest one. Because. I knew this and I, I half ass did it when I started in 2009 because I went through two different computer systems because I had my list started on my uh, Windows based machine and that sucker just let me down time and time again. So a lot of data was lost. If I had really stayed on it because, you know, I was having success and I, I was keep I was making a list. I've always had a list. It's just it would be much larger if I had really, really put the focus on the list that I put I started really, really focusing on my list about four months ago, and I've doubled it in four months. The list that took me five years to pick, I've doubled in four months because I'm focusing on it because of, like I said, I had a lot of the things that were going on that were helping me, but since I made a pivot, it is very, very imperative that that list is something that must be developed, but you got to do it. I don't care if you're selling uh, shaved chinchillas are you doing the cuddle thing or you you were you know selling ice to eskimos you gotta have a list you have to um let's talk about numbers many people will like when a list on my list for years stayed at a core group of about like 600 people you know i lose some i gain some it's about 600 people and also i had the Amazon thing, and I will talk about that. At one point, Amazon was really working well for me with the sale of my book. I mean, I was making, at one point, the book was $99, and I was selling three and four a day, every day. So that was another reason I wasn't focused on my list because I had money coming from that, and I didn't really do Kindle, and I had a lot of sales coming from Urban Pack Rat. So I had the stuff on Amazon, and I, you know, it was just a lovely, lovely thing. But I knew that that was not going to go on forever and forever, and it stopped. But fortunately, I was prepared. But uh, the activity today, and you won't be able to just like do it now, not this one, is you're going to begin building your list at the end of this presentation. When this stops, this is what you're going to work on, because you have to do this early, early, early in your business. Wrap your brain around it. Make sure that you understand the value of that list because when you get there are guys who are internet marketers they have a list of 50,000 100,000 they'll they'll do what's called JV or joint venture partnerships and they'll just like hey you know now borrow someone's list and split the profit right and they got a list of 100,000 and they get like a 2% response rate doesn't sound like a lot right as a lot of people That's you know, I'll give you the quick, quick, quick math. So, because you know, I have tools. It's called a calculator. I use those things on occasion, and I actually highly suggest that you use it too. Because when you do that, 
doesn't sound like a lot. It's only 2,000. But when you do 2,000, just 2,000 times a $99 product, that's $200,000 in hours. I've seen it. I've actually been on webinars. I've actually seen it happen. So that's just to show you. Now, let's talk about another kind of list. Let's talk about a highly, highly targeted list that's highly engaged. Let's talk about cookies because uh, the person, my friend who has the cookie business, I'm working on her with this right now. Uh, her list right now, she is about 35 people deep times 20. So she's got reoccurring revenue in her list. So that's a different kind of list. That's a very different kind of list. That's a highly, that's a hot list because you can have, say, a $25 reoccurring fee times 100. It's 2500 bucks a month. So there's different kind of lists, but depending on what you're doing, and like if you're doing resale, our resale list when we're doing the upscale garage sale, uh, I only put people who bought big ticket items on the main list. There was two lists. There was like someone spends 500 bucks with me, they were going on the list. And there was another list that if I captured their email address, they were going on the general broadcast list. The people that were on the special list, and it was only like about 400 of them, but they got discounts and deals because they spent big money with us. So a person spends big money with you once, they'll do it again, they'll do it again, and they're much easier to get referrals from, from their friends and family. Much easier. You could just call them up and say, look, uh, I've got this deal. You've been such a good customer to me, customer to me that I want to offer you, your friends, and your family this deal. That was one of the reasons that you know we were able to really do well in the warehouse was because we had that customer list. It was it. Because I remember it was a cold, cold day, and we were in the warehouse, and I was doing head count because every time someone walked through the door, I was like, if I never saw anyone, I'll just chat them up and try to get their name on the list. I remember we had about 300 people come through, and there was not one new person. So if we didn't have the established customer base that we did or the list that day we would have made no money that is how important a customer list is there were several weekends like that just i mean they always bugged me out because it was just like because you have attrition <clears throat> people move people have different un you know requirements so anytime that we had those uh, days it was just like we get weird because it's like how you know with the signs up we did everything why didn't we attract any new people that was a curious proposition. So your list is super, super important to your business, whatever you do. And a lot of people don't build a list. And they do what I have to call power up on each sale. And they don't really get to maximize the relationship that's been established. Make it rain. For those of you who know me, you know why those kittens are up there. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the money's in the list, and uh, I know for a fact, when I have the right product, I can make thousands in an hour. I've done it with certain things. Um, the first storage auction webinar that I did, I did it from my list. I've had 110 people, but it was highly targeted. It's very active. I did 7,200 bucks in three hours. First time I did that work. So... You don't have to have this super large list. If you know, it really depends upon your product. It depends on your targeting. It depends. There, there's so many variables because what I'm just doing is giving you a general overview of why you need a list, and not trying to seriously, seriously impress upon you that you have to get one and you have to make one. You, you have to. And I'm going to give you the benefits of how, where I've screwed up and things that you should not do. And for, I know there's someone that's just like, well, you know, I don't have a business. I'm just here because it's a free webinar and I just want some information. Great. Outstanding, as my drill sergeant used to say. You're in the prime position to learn how to do this right from jump and not develop any bad habits. Um, all great civilizations, all big things, you know, from going f f to the moon started off with a small ideal. Everyone was brand new at some point. Don't worry about it. Uncle G has you. All right. Now, I'm going to tell you who I use and why I use them. I used everything before. Uh, when we had the storage auction business, I was using Constant Contact. But 
I like it response because they have several nifty bells and features. Several killer stuff. And the first plan is like 15 bucks. I'm paying like 50 bucks for my plan. So what I like them is for what I do, and it, this may not work for you because they're all a little different and I'm gonna give you some overviews. They just suit my personality, if that makes sense. Just the way the dashboard works, just the layout, just how things are done, certain rules, certain ways they handle you. That, uh, you know, I highly recommend them. I highly recommend them. They're not the cheapest, but for me, they're a good buy. And uh, I sent out an email and it has an affiliate link. You know, once again, this is the G-verse. We're not going to like, well, just go ahead and sign up. No, if you hit that, I get some change. I have no shame in telling you that because I've been saying that on YouTube for years. Ask for the money. Tell people what you want. Do it. You don't have to hide and play games. Yeah, you know, it's an affiliate link. And if many of you sign up, I, I can go out and have a nice state dinner. And I would say thank you. But I'm also teaching you a lesson because as you get into this business, because there's some of you who want to do Internet marketing. There's some of you who want to do wholesale. On, there's so many things. <clears throat> but this is just to prime your mind the possibilities of developing another income stream because this is one of the things you can do now let's just talk about who I used to use a Weber is like the big daddy of them all you know if you sign on a lot of webinars you you'll see you're getting some from a Weber and I'm gonna tell you why you see that frequently and it's not why you think it is um, they're great I have not a bad thing to say about them a Weber which is what I had for a few years before I left them for Constant Contact, is they haven't updated their platform in a method that suits me and where my business is going. Once again, I have nothing to say. They're a great company. They serve me well. They're pretty affordable. And um, it's just they didn't innovate in a lot of the stuff that I'm doing. They don't have tools that help me. MailChimp is free up to, I believe, 2,500 people. MailChimp's based here in Atlanta. I was using them for a little while. They're cool. I like them, but I like Get Response much better. Constant Contact, I will say bad things about them. When I had them, and this is an older review, they could have changed these things. They would just, they were hard to work with. You import a list, it take a week. To, I mean, it was just, just, err, err. You know, it was just really, really pulling teeth. I didn't like them, won't use them again. And the thing is, now going back to AWeber, pick which one you want to use. Like you could play around, like if you got a list of 10, 15, 20, 30 people you move, it's not going to be a lot of impact with that. But if you uh, have a list of two, 3,000 and you do a move, AWeber is going to require you to do a double opt in, which means you're going to lose 30 to 40, maybe 50% of your list. MailChimp, uh, you can actually upload a lot, but if you get a bunch of complaints, they're going to shut you down. Constant contact will bitch slap you just for breathing too hard. So the reason AWeber has so many is this la this line. Pick your pick wisely. Each time you move your list, you will lose people. That's why you see so many older internet marketers. They started with AWeber. They know that if they try to move that list of 100,000 people or 200,000 people to MailChimp or get response, they may lose 30 to 40 percent of their list. That's a lot of money that they're going to lose. And I, I mean, it, the psychology is just crazy, but it's you, but you're moving to a different platform. Many people will not reopt in. They will not. So which whatever way you go, whether it's AWeber, MailChimp, Constant Contact or get response, make sure you stick with your client. Now, you can move your list and not do the double opt in, but once again, if you get a bunch of complaints, they will shut you down. AWeber is notorious for that. Uh, there was an internet marketer that had a list of like 200,000 people, and really his fault because uh, his name was Charles Kirkland. He got shut down, but he could have did like a uh, downloaded all his emails on the Excel spreadsheet and you know, went through the double opt in and he would have lost some but he wouldn't have completely lost it. He completely lost everything. So but why should you use an email client? Why should you spend the money? You can send anyone a few emails and not go to jail for spam. But if you get into a position where you send the wrong email to the wrong person and you don't give them an unsubscribe button or you don't give them they could sue you. 
Most people won't, but if you come across the wrong person that someone bitch slapped their poodle and they're in a bad mood and they need to take out that aggression on someone, it could be you. People are being sued for using pictures on their blogs from, you know, so there's a lot of stuff that's going out there. So it's a legal issue why you use it. Also, it's another issue. Um, I've been doing this a while. It used to be I could send thousand emails through my email, you know, through my uh, domain host, through my hosting company. Then it went down to 500. Then it went down to 400. I could send maybe 200 emails through my dom my hosting company now. So you run into a problem if you're going to just send the email stack. As long as your list is small, yeah, you can do it all day long. But the minute you build up a big list, you are going to have some issues. Now, let's talk about how to build a list. You have to make a commitment to do it. That is the most important thing. You have to make a commitment to build that list because it's not sexy. And you don't really see it as a money generating activity when it is the money generating activity. Uh, another way to get your list growing, and that's one of the reasons that you know many of you got my free audio book, uh, The Hustler's Mindset, you have to give something of value. When I was just had the link under the YouTube videos, I was getting one or two every other day. Since I started giving out that book, I've had days where I get 30, 40 people in a day. I had one day I've got 60. So having some significant free offer or something, a coupon, something will increase response 90%. So you got to have that. I'm just saving you a lot of trial. You can put you know, the ebook thing and eh, people are like, I'm done with ebooks. It, you need something hot. You need something crisp. You need something shiny. Uh, also depends on what you're doing. Depends on how well you know, you're known. Like if you're like a famous person, then you do an ebook. It'll probably work very well for you. But you're going to have to play around with it based on your business. Now, another reason you have to make a commitment to it and, uh, is you gotta look at the long term. You get a blog or whatever, and you get ten new signups a day. It's thirty six hundred people in a year. That's ten thousand in three years. Now you can do a lot with a list of ten thousand. You can do a lot. And one of the reasons that my list was fragmented and stuff is I did pivots and I changed direction. So every time I changed direction, I lost people, which is cool. You know, if people came for steak and then all of a sudden I'm serving, you know, a casserole, they're going to leave. They're going to go to another restaurant that's serving steak because that's what they came for. It's like, I want steak. I want it well done. Now nah, I want it rare. Anyway, I want steak. But you got casserole, so I'm out. That's one of the things you have to really look into when you do your game plan for building your business and that's why I say have two three or four businesses so you can let the thing roll and marinate and matriculate into what it you want it to be because when you start pivoting people get nervous they get scared they get scared I don't know what it is now what it? it's just it, it's just a change and you know people came for one thing so they're gonna go for the other thing boo y'all I told you I tried to warn you I tried to warn you this is some. This is the daily activity. You're going to create a list of everyone you know. Everybody. You must get their email, and if you can, their phone number. The phone number is going to be much harder, significantly harder. Uh, small list. You can use your. I already went over that. You can use your email system, but you get over 200. You're going to need an email client, such as Get Response. Like I said, Mailchimp gives you a lot for free, so you can go do that. But when I talk about everyone, I'm not talking about because people do topical. It's like, well, I know Ed and Sally. You'll go with that people you hang out with. You'll go with the people that you're the most comfortable with first. That's part of your list. That's not everyone. I'm talking about the deacon at church. I'm talking about your old classmates. Everybody you know. Because if you do that, you're probably going to build a list of four to 600 people. If you do it right. And you reach out and just, I'm talking about old college classmates. Everyone that's actually been in your physical presence get their list I'm talking about if you go to you know uh, quick trip and you know the people in there very well that's everyone you know and by doing this and once again uh, this came as a comment for the hug exercise you may have people that you know who are aching for your product but because you never introduced it to them they don't know about you 
So you, you have to pull the fear back. You have to peel the fear back and just go in naked and make it happen. And once you put this list together, because for some of you it's going to be real easy, for some of you it's going to take a while, you're going to use one of the ideals from one of the previous exercises of day one, two, or three, and you're going to pitch it to that list once it's built. Now, like I said, a small list can do well, but this is a case where size matters greatly. The bigger your list, the bigger the impact. That's just how it is. And, you know, if you just got a short list, you know, and you're feeling a little incompetent or a little inadequate, just remember, it's um, the motion. No, nah, that's a lie. That's a lie. Or you ask a woman that you ain't trying to hit, she'll tell you the truth. She'll like, no, 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 no. Big ones build better. So a big list will get you further. It will have more bang for the buck. <laughs> But seriously, you got to build this and you got to start with the people who know you and like you. They're going to be your easier sales. Uh, that's just going to be it. So as you build this list, you have to keep doing it and you have to develop list building tools like a, a snazzy business card that gets people to email you. There's ways to do that. Some kind of offering. Our packages that we used to send out to customers at rent crate included like a little plastic crate with a little dolly and all the stuff. It's about 25 bucks at the time to send out a package, but we we're hitting Fortune 500 companies, Fortune 1000 companies. So we got one client that easily paid for the uh, collateral materials that we use for our mailers. But you got to build a list. You, you got to build a list and you got to start with what you have. And if you only have 20 people, it's a beginning. Uh, I would not advise you to start spending money on Facebook ads or YouTube ads until you validate your product. Which means you go through this list, you do this exercise, you do it well, wax on, wax off, you do it really well, execute perfectly. You'll get numbers out of this, you'll get metrics, and you'll figure out. Like I give you an example. I do YouTube advertising and when I did the dollar challenge I spent the least amount of money and I got the most bang for that video because of the copy that was in the thumbnail copy copy is crazy and if I can make a recommendation because it's something that I'm gonna do because I read one I'm gonna read it again go out today go on Amazon and find a book on how to write copy that could be one of, that could be another gift that you can give yourself because that's going to be very very important to what you do in developing your list and sending out emails for go now there's a, a site website called copy blogger uh, great resource there go there and really really think about this because as I enhance and elevate my business there's things that I'm doing because everything that I'm telling you here I'm doing I pissed off a lot of my friends, but I actually did it in Converse because I wasn't as smooth with my stuff as I am now because I hit them up later. But essentially, work on building this list. It, this is going to be a super critical part of your business. And if you do it now, and say you're brand new and all shiny, you do it now, five years from now, your list will be massive and very profitable. Now, this goes back to the activities. So you have two businesses. Uh, which one are you going to use for your list? Hmm? What are you going to use? Now, this is uh, some recommendations on how to do this. Like, you got two businesses, right? And you're creating this one list. Do not create a different list for each business from the beginning. Focus on creating that one list. So you can sell products from company B to your, your A list. Just use that one list for multiple companies, multiple products, you know, and put it under, like, say your company's name, Bucking Dunkos, I mean, uh, Bucking Donkeys. Everything goes out as under a Bucking Donkey product list. You don't even you know if the other company's name, Airheaded Blondes. No, you, you will not put that name on there. You'll just use the product and use the list. And once you get the first list built and start making money, it's easier. You'll learn how to build a second list. And... I know people are like, what, two businesses? I thought you like said, just do one thing. The reason, and for those of you who don't missed a few days, the goal is to start four businesses. And I know you're like, what? Yes, four, four businesses. And the reason I want you to do that is, out of the four ideals that you're validating, that you're pushing product, 
one's going to shine. One is going to shine and something else is going to happen too. You're not going to be as pressed about that one business. See, when you put all your eggs on that one basket, it's very easy to go nuclear and lose it. Because it's like, you're all in. You're all in on that one ideal, and that ideal may not be the best ideal. So if you're testing and validating four ideals, you, you give yourself, it's like, I'll just be basic. Say you have four women you can date, or if you're a woman, you have four guys you can date. It's Friday night, your first one canceled. All right, number two, oh, he's busy. Number three, oh, busy. Number four, sure, let's go out. Same principle. If you have more options, you have more ways to get out of a bind. <laughs> yes, I put it that way. It, it, it's just going to be easier for you because the thing is, the way that we're starting these businesses, you're not spending a lot of money. You're not spending a lot of time. So you're not really investing a lot of you into it before you realize that it's worth something investing because you're trying to validate the business. You're trying to put it out there and no one's buying and people are going, boo. Guess what? Cut, bait, and move on. It's like, okay, this idea is not working. You've you've done it. You've figured out, you know, uh, there are people who get to that stage and then they go out and invest more money and start spending money on advertising. I validate businesses all the time. You've seen me put stuff up and then I get, people go, boo. You never see it again. You just never see it again. You're like, hmm, that ain't going to work. And understand, you will fail much more than you will succeed. So there's two people who listen to that statement. One person's going like, shit, I ain't going to do anything. The other person's like, okay, I need to fail more. Be the other person. I need to fail more. I need to put more stuff out there. I need to really, really crank up my business. Okay. This is a test. Right now, for those of you who've been here every day, this is like starting to get a little bit more and more challenging. And I want it to be more and more challenging. I want you to think where you'd be next year if you do this now. Because right now, it, it, some of it's just like, whoa, this, like the hug thing. A lot of people are like, Glendon, I don't know about that hugging thing. You know, I'm in New York, I'm in New Jersey. Then uh, one person's like, I just went out and did it. And the, the one dude was like, yeah, it was this girl and I did it. And she gave me this big hug. And he's like, I need to do this more often. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you go up to people with this pitch, I'm taking this business course and this is one of the, and it's true. Because see, this is the thing. You're not making it up. People have like, when you've ever been approached by the street hustler that's like, that comes to you with this well-polished, well, you see, they, I, I remember this guy, he came out, first thing he presented is like, hey, my name is Roger Jordan. He shows me his driver's license, which immediately raises all kinds of red flags because why are you showing me your driver's license? He comes with his pitch and it's like, you know, just letting you know, I'm a good guy. I'm a clean guy. I got a job. I just need $5 to get some gas. Now he's got this well-polished, well-rehearsed pitch. I'm a salesperson, so I know when I'm someone's trying to sell me, and I'm not mad at for him selling me. I'm mad at him for giving me such a shitty pitch. If this is, and I, you, you're more smarter than you know, when someone has a problem, and you know this, like if someone has an emergency, how do they call you? How, it's like, hey, this is Ed. Mom just had a heart attack. Boom, 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 boom. There is no pitch. There, it's just it. It's a dire circumstance. This is what's going on. Let's, you get they get straight to the meat of the matter. There is no pitch. That's how you know when someone's truly in urgent uh, circumstances or there's something. There's no pitch. There doesn't have to be a pitch. The circumstance is so great it doesn't need a pitch. So I want you to think about this as you pitch yourself. Get to the reality and the bones of who you are and what you want to accomplish with this. Know that if you do the exercises you'll make money. If you do this program from beginning to end, you'll be a different person. You'll be more confident and you will have a business. At the end of this program, you will have a business that makes you money. Or if you already have a business, you will drastically improve your business and make more money. So with that, I'm going to pop out to the questions because that's what everybody wants to uh, be a part of. So I'm going to go in here. 
That's a cheat at. Uh, yes, no hot Atlanta. Okay, here's Richard. I like this. I made an extra $500 profit yesterday by implementing a few of the business ideas. I wouldn't have done that without the course because I'm comfortable. Thank you for driving me to push harder and think creatively. Uh, damn. Like, like I said, I'm telling you, you do this stuff, you'll make money. Congratulations, Richard. I love hearing that. This is the way. Hmm, I have a tractor. Anyone needs their driveway plowed? Hey, if you can get in here, you can make it happen. What's up, Ed Evans? Uh, John Lawyer. How often do you send mail merges from your list? What is ethical? When does any spam laws come in and shut you down? Okay. Um, typically, you condition your list by how many emails you send out. I virtually send out emails like every day or every other day. Like for this, I'm sending out stuff once a day, twice a day. Spam becomes when they don't want it. So you got to understand. It's kind of like I, I'll give you the sexual harassment argument. If you hit on a woman in the office and she likes you and reciprocates, reciprocate, yeah, reciprocates, it's not sexual harassment. But if you hit on a woman in the office and she hates you, it is sexual harassment. So what makes it spam or not spam is how the person receives it. Uh, Dwayne, yeah, I started this yesterday. I emailed my primary customers, not all, sent them a coupon for 14% off Valentine's Day service. That also doubled up if they referred me to another customer who used me in the same time period. Congratulations. That's what I'm talking about. Dave Salzy, the more people you serve, the more money you make. Earl Nightingale all day long is 100% correct. Oh, John, you're already a copywriter. <laughs> well, well, go ahead, man. Um, Jelini, I've heard good things about Clayton make peace copywriting material. Hey, go for it. Uh, the Wayne, my Craigslist ad for snow removal just went live, and I had this tractor for four years. Tars today starts earning its keep. Um, I went over that. This was from Michael. What email class do you recommend? I recommend Get Response. That's what I use. Sure, no problem. Excellent. Te teaching us to rethink the obvious. I'm gonna talk about that. It's when you're in your business. You're like can't see the outside of your building because you're in the business. So sometimes you need that extra person. It doesn't even necessarily have to be me like a business consultant, but someone that you know who can kind of look at your business and go, hey, you know, you need to repaint the outside of something because when you're in it, you can't see it. You're too close to the trees. Uh, Aaron James, what is the best way to hand out your resume? Don't. Don't. All right, let's talk about this. I'm going to do a sideways because uh, this is talking about getting a job. Never, ever, ever hand out your resume. That's like handing out business cards. If a person requests your business card, that's a different thing. But you just hand it to them, it's, they're going to go in the trash or they're going to forget about it and they won't even remember you. Do something memorable. If you want a job, do this. Go to the company, introduce yourself, say, hi, my name's Aaron. I'm really interested in working at your company. If you give me a month part time, I will come in, learn the company for free on my dime. You go pitch 10 businesses that and one will give you a shot because no one walks in the door like that. They walk in the door. Hey, I'm fresh. I'm shiny. I want $50,000 a year plus eight weeks of vacation. Um, cold calling. I can't remember that book. And like I said, I only read one. I'm going to recommend copy blogger for copy writing and just keep going in that direction. Uh, Dina, can you send me a pass link for password maps? I'll address that at the end. Let's see. All right, this is Dave. If you start off with a digital product and don't have a prior mailing list, what kind of homework techniques do you do to get to build it up in forum postings? There are several ways to build a list. I use YouTube and you're going to have to kind of find out what's comfortable for you. I mean, it's really the first thing you got to do is figure out what you want to sell. That's the first thing. And well, actually, that could be the second thing. Go out and find a marketplace. Find out a group of people you want to serve and kind of see what they need and start building your list from their needs. 
this is Yoshi Nakamura, YouTube subscribers. You have over 10,000K. How did you get them onto your email list? That was a trip. Um, essentially, I don't have all 10,000 on the email list. YouTube, the subscribers thing system for YouTube was broken. They're working on it. Uh, there are people who are on my list who don't even have YouTube accounts anymore. It's really misleading. Um, my list primarily composed of people that got something from me. Because anyone can like, oh, I like this one video and that's it. And you'll never hear from them again. Uh, my list is composed from people who bought stuff from me, uh, people who download the free book. That's how you get a better list. Just because they subscribe doesn't mean they're going to be active. This is from Chris. Is it worthwhile to pitch, hustle old friends, acquaintances, or family? Won't, won't that leave a sour taste in their mouth from experience, especially if the product or service doesn't apply to them? Well, once again, you start off with a low margin well not a low margin you start off with a low price point product and build trust if you're going after them for a two thousand dollar offer yeah that could be a problem but if you're going after them for like a 10 15 20 dollar thing no not so much so you kind of start with that and then you build your way up because the thing is you're going to start small anyway and then work out all the flaws uh typically i have i have good friends i had a lot of friends that bought my book and i didn't know it until i went to their house so it really kind of depends on your friendship and if you're like a yard bird or someone that fucks up a lot you may have issues but if you've been a solid friend for years this won't be a problem Dwayne DeLong if I hire a helper I never look at a resume I look at what they've done can they keep up with them I need them will they show up without caring them are they honest yeah like people yeah, don't even worry about resumes sure thing Evan. all right this is from April if you start off with a mail list of people you already know, how do you get them to opt in? Are you offering the item of value first? Do you just start emailing them and assume that they want your information until they tell you they want you one out? What you do is you pitch them in your first email to them. It's like, hey, this is April. I'm selling service XYZ. I think it'll be good for you. And here's the offer. You just don't like, you know, you, you pitch them in the very first email and give them the option to opt out. This is Jelini. These webinars are helping me to figure out how to make the best use of resources that I've accumulated over the years. Cool. Uh, this is from John Robinson. Recommendation for copywriting books. Advertising Secrets of the Written Word by Joe Sugarman. I actually heard of him. He says it's expensive. The Leather Book by Robert Collier. Just to go a little bit deeper on that, there are copywriters who make seven figures a year because it's an art to doing that stuff. So I've heard of Sugarman. I've actually heard of Sugarman. But if it can make you money, it's worth it. You know, uh, you have to buy your education. This is Ed Richards. Can you build a list through Amazon FBA? Great question. Hell to the no. You cannot build a list through Amazon FBA. You can build a list through eBay because you get their email address through PayPal. Amazon and eBay are doing everything in the world to keep you from their customers. Those are not your customers. Those are eBay's and Amazon's customers. <laughs> so no, you can't. And also, if you email those people and try to make an offer, Amazon's going to get rid of you if they find out about it. Uh, this is from Leon. Do you survey your audience before you create a product? If not, what is your process for deciding when to stop everything and to focus on creating a certain product? Great question. I sometimes survey, sometimes I don't because I have so many ideas and I like to play around. I'll put it out for a week and if the response is like, boo, I'll yank it. I'll euthanize it in a heartbeat. I don't care how much I love it because essentially it's like when you eat chocolate for the first time, you, you, you pick it up, you put it in your mouth, it's like, oh, this is good. If you, the customer out there, and I put this thing out and you're like, eat it and go, puh, <laughs> that's not going to change. <laughs> it's, it's not going to change. I had to learn that the hard way. Some of your best ideas, some of the things that you love the most are so hard to let go of, but you got to develop that process to kill, to euthanize the baby, as I call it. You have to, or it will strangle you. Uh, Carmen, I'll I'll address that at the end. 
Uh, this is Richard Cannon. Uh, I bought all of Daniel Pink's books. What else would you recommend I read? I would suggest get Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field audio set. You can get it on Amazon. I would recommend The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray. And I would recommend Irrationally Predictable by Dan Airely. Just off the top of my head. Uh, Brian Holmes. When you get an email client, you don't have to do that. Like, Okay, if you're going to do what I call down and dirty email, you're going to have to go ahead and manually enter all those emails into your address book and create a list. If you use an email client, it does all that stuff for you. Static? Uh, don't know about that. If anyone else is hearing any static, let me know. Remember, I'm, I'm be it's snowing right now. It could be snow static. Uh, Dina, I found a local entrepreneur based groups via YouTube. I'm in need of business guidance on how do I know I can trust their guidance or intent? Mmm, good question. Go to the group, look at the person, and look at their life. This is one of my sayings. If a person is talking about making money, but, and once again, their car doesn't have to be a luxury car or anything, but look at stuff like, <clears throat> look at the tires of their car. I know it's going to sound crazy. But if they're not taking care of the tires, which is between them and life and death, what else are they not taking care of? Look, is the car clean? Is the car maintained? It can be a 1977, you know, Chrysler Cordoba. You know, if you remember my Carlo Monteblanc and Tattooed Le Plain, Le Plain. And long as it's clean, I had a 1994 BMW called Thor, and I got compliments on that thing every day because it was well maintained. It didn't go clickly clank clank clank. It didn't have smoke shooting out of it, and it was a well maintained older car. And that's a tip: if you don't have money to get a brand new luxury car, go out and get an old luxury car, paint it, make sure the wheels and stuff look good, and the seat has seat covers, and people will instantly think you have that you've had class for years. I'm telling you, it is amazing what that will do for you. So if you can't floss a new one, go out and get an old BMW, an old Mercedes. Make sure the paint job's tight. Make sure, and people will instantly respect you because it's still a Mercedes. It's an old Mercedes. It's still a Mercedes. It's an old BMW. Because I found that out with the '94. I was just amazed at how many people would just start coming up and talking to me. Uh, Chris, any tips on acquiring uh, or sizing up potential business partners or team members? That one is a little tricky. It kind of depends on what you're doing. Like as I mentioned with the joint venture partnerships, those guys a lot of times don't even know each other that well. So we'll talk about that later because that, that's way too deep to get into it right now. Uh, Yoshi, purchase an email list. Does this really work? Yes and no. You can purchase email lists, but they may all be dead. They may be um, totally worn out. When you buy a list, you don't know the quality of the list. And if it's real cheap, more than likely it's been resold and resold and resold. I actually recommend doing the hard work of building your own list or if you partner with someone that's going to let you use a good list. I wouldn't recommend buying a list. But that's just my opinion. I wouldn't do it. Uh, same question. Is there ever a worthwhile list to buy? Uh, this is from Tracy. I have a list that I've built for RE around 1,000 people, very good, that I actively market to now. They know me for RE. I don't really know how to introduce these people to my other ventures without feeling spammy. This is what you do. You take a small group of that 1,000 people, about 50, and you introduce them to your new venture, and you work out all the kinks with that 50 before you introduce it to the larger group. That way, if you piss off 50 people, you only lose like 0.5% of your list. Uh, there's, there's, <laughs> you, yeah, there's more homework, building the list. Yeah, the list thing is pretty much it. Let's see. No problem, uh, Leon. All right, uh, this is off topic, but I'm going to answer, Andrew, this is from Aaron. Do you recommend investing in physical gold and silver and bullion and coins as a hedge against inflation? Not much just a coin a week, for example. Uh, personal decision, I don't, I'm not buying silver or gold, and this is why. If those things become super valuable, that means shit has hit the fan in a major way. You would be better off stockpiling guns and ammo. 
the best way to deal with a crisis situation like that is to have marketable skills because in a situation like Mad Max money's not really going to matter it's like either you have food or you don't have food you have water or you don't have water you have fuel or you don't have fuel that's you know so gold and silver people are not going to give two shits about that they're going to care about the things they need go to the walking dead you see them like buying stuff with gold and snow. That's just like, hey, we're gonna rob this store and give. Well, we're gonna scavenge this store. And this is Dina. Like I trust you. I'm a data junkie. You can never learn too much. I totally agree. Uh, Dwayne says no static, just snow. I know, right? Uh, this is Isaiah. Could you restate the issue with getting eBay, PayPal emails for upsell? You can get PayPal emails because you get the email in your uh, PayPal account. You can't get Amazon. You, you're going to have to go through your e your PayPal account and manually pull out those emails. Uh, this is from Michael. You should check out this book called Contagious by Jonathan Jonah Berger. The book deals with marketing and selling. Another book recommendation. Thank you. Uh, this is from Dwayne. Yep, good observation. Many of you may use buy used cars and let you take the new car hit but the maintenance is a great way to tell someone is living by their means i'm telling you it i've seen so many people i give you an example i went to this meeting and there was this chick and she had a poor cyan the tires were dangerous i saw i saw belts i saw belts like uh the tires for that vehicle were about two thousand for a new pair i saw belts i mean if you know anything about your vehicle your tires are super important that's between that's the difference between life and death you 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 blow out on the highway you could be gone uh i've seen a lot of people another way you can look uh watch you can look at their clothing you can look at their shoes if they've got run over shooting i mean it's like two bucks to get taps for your heel and toe there, there's just certain little things because you'll have someone who has great business advice and he has a lot of money but i got a neighbor um his wife uh, tom and patty they're loaded you wouldn't know it but you know tom's got a gold rolex and she's got this nice wedding ring and they go to target and stuff i see them in there you wouldn't know it. it's just the little things but their vehicle that sucker's maintained they have two his truck is a, like a night it's a ranger is they're maintained okay i don't have a newer car how do i get past the impression <laughs> I got a 1982 Corvette, not practical, but nice. Hey, that's an attention getter. This is from Brian. What email client are you using? Can I get my Apple email client to filter for a pool of business contacts? Uh, once again, going back to you, you can use your Apple email client, but if you don't use like a professional client like GetResponse or, you know, AWeber, you're going to run into some problems and once your list gets to a certain size you will not be able to email that whole list and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, hosting companies will block you if you do a lot of that mailing no you can see everything Ed. i got the whole screen open tracy real estate yeah i mean you can still okay i'm gonna, I'm gonna give you something like you got this thousand real estate customers you can say, hey, me and my daughter are going to do this cupcake business. And, you know, it's just some fun project for her. And, like, boom, would you like some cupcakes to that 50? You never know until you uh, introduce it to your people what they may like and what they may not like. This is Brian. I've made more money on Tupperware and Pamper Chef than anyone making on Go. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, this is from Aaron. Very random question. What would you do if you inherited $10 million? Now, actually, I have a real quick answer for you. If I got $10 million cash, I would buy a, co a commercial office building. First thing I would do, I wouldn't spend a penny. I would pay the taxes and just go buy a building. First thing I would do. This is from Yoshi. Uh, are you really soliciting donations? What's in it for us again? okay uh, apparently you didn't watch the video I'll break it down for you there's a lot of people that can't get in because after you get to 80 90 people it starts bumping people out my um yeah I'm soliciting donations because I'm doing this for free and I'm not gonna pay another what's it 
like 400 bucks to go to the next level to give away this for free so essentially if you watched the video you would have saw that it was boom to help your fellow man out and it's also an experiment because just like I'm doing this course and I'm doing all this crazy stuff for you I do stuff like that for myself I want to see because it's often put out on YouTube that everyone's out to help I want to see how many people are going to help their fellow man by giving me money that I can take go to webinar to the next level now what's really interesting everyone that's donated so far is a member of Hustler University that's what cracks me up. The people who are already going to get this information, who are already locked in, those are the ones that are donating, which also should tell you something. Those folks understand what this information is, and they want to help other people because uh, the people in Hustle University are the shit. Uh, Ed Richards, what is your view on putting out a Kindle book like two ninety nine or three ninety nine and building a list through link to scribe the list in ebook? I think it's an awesome idea. You can write a book just for lead generation because you can give it away for free. And at those price points of $2.99 and $3.99, you're going to get 70% of the deal. To really use it as a list building item, you're going to have to give it away for free as often as possible. Kindle gives you five days every 90 days to do that. So if you really want your list building thing to rock and roll, you need 12 books. So you can always have one out for free. This is Karen. I'm treated different than business clothes and jeans. I know. I'm serious. Whenever I put on a shirt and tie, people look at me like a totally different. Uh, the way most email clients have extensions to filter and sort your email. Should be too hard to build a list. Okay, let's talk about that. Let, let me be more specific. It's not about so. If you keep trying to use your stuff, you're going to run into a legal problem and you're going to run into a size problem. Once your list gets past two or three hundred people, your hosting domains probably not going to let you email everyone. They're going to cut you off. They'll like send out 200 and 100. I've, and I'm tell, I've done this. I've tried it. It's just like, uh, once again, I was used to be able to send out 500 emails. Can't do it anymore. Um, when I switched from, uh, let's see, was it when I switched my uh, domain hosting company? I, it crunked down so try if you if you want to have a real small list you can get away with that but if you want to have a list of 500 or more nah <laughs> not gonna happen you will get shut down uh, I'm gonna answer these few questions and then because it's almost up so just come back tomorrow because I'll be here again at four Carmen Smith or gold digger diggers worth it every now and then Hell no. <laughs> uh, James Milton, since it's kind of gray area, getting email from PayPal should be should hassle with doing so. And I'm not going to say that. Actually, if you get the email from PayPal and you send out an introduction email and ask them to be on your list and they opt in. No, no legal issues whatsoever. Knowledge is power. Uh, just in your why would you buy a commercial building revenue for my grandkids uh, I know when I had my it's funny when I was doing contract office furniture I got to meet a lot of people real estate guys commercial real estate guys and I got to meet a few guys who own building uh, one night we were doing an install about 10 p.m. and I got to meet Richard Byers who owns this building on Peachtree Street just one I think that building, when he bought it, he told me he paid, he borrowed a million bucks. When I knew him, it was worth about 30 million. It's completely list, it's completely leased it. And I think the rent is like two million a month is what he gets. And he owns that sucker with no mortgage on it. That is kind of the generational wealth that you can leave to your kids. And I mean, it, it's just the thing that, you know, his grandkids who aren't even thought of yet are going to enjoy that wealth. It, it is 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 incredibly powerful. What do you mean, Leslie? How close am I to the next level? What next level? That's a little broad. And this is Chris. I have an email list of buyers. Each wants different stuff. I can meet their needs because of the storage auction business. My list is very fragmented. How do I handle this? You're going to have to like pull out your furniture people, your knickknack stuff. You're going to have to segment it yourself. And just, you know, based on what they buy, send them what they want. 
David Salzi. Those of us kicking in the G verse are Captain Sale. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. It's like everyone that's donated is already in the Hustler universe. Uh, how did we donate? Uh, it go, it's the last, you, and it's not the snow video. It's the last video that I put up on YouTube, day four. There's a link right under it. Uh, Chris Gamma, how many people showed up? Is there's a possibility of not getting into the, the webinar? Yes. Uh, typically, people start getting bumped out around 90 something, 91, 92. Because. There, yeah, there was 200 registered for the day, and yeah, if you don't get in here early, you'll get bumped. Because when I get off of here, I'm gonna see the emails like I was there, but I didn't get anything. And this is Troy. Paid my donation today to help my fellow Americans not to be wage slaves. You're a good man, Troy. Uh, Yoshi, NPR and PS give you a trinket for your donation. Will you? Um, no, nah, it's just straight donation. It's karma to give to who give to you. Trust me, as soon as I make get to twenty five hundred a month, you'll be first to get paid. This is from Deanna. Okay, cool. Aaron Jills, have you ever bought a luggage auction? Nope. <laughs> Carmen's laughing. Sure. Uh every all right, this is the deal before I'm gonna let's see. Can I let's see. Next level for the seminar. Oh, no. Uh, we're still on the first 10 days. It's not really going to get crunk until, like, day 11. Oh, okay. I'm already there. Um, we're already at capacity. And for the other group of people who want to get in, because uh, what I do is download the attendees, and it's different every day. If you don't get here early, you're not getting in. Um, so yeah, I'm already there. The next level is 400 bucks. I pay a hundred and it's 400 bucks to go to the next level. Uh, Christopher, I just signed up for, I'm going to have to add you to the Facebook group. I'll do it once I'm off. Actually, that's a good question. Have you ever sent an email to all your old eBay customers to say, Hey, let me tell you how I'm making money on and off eBay. I can't access that stuff because I forgot the passwords. When I walked away from eBay in 2006, I walked away. I couldn't even get into that stuff. I don't even remember some of the IDs. But that's a thought. That is seriously a thought. Anymore, what's going on with the passive income channel? I decided to devote myself to active income. <laughs> Leslie deducting the donation. Okay. All right, since I'm on, it's five o'clock, I'm gonna wrap this up. This is the new thing. Um, I've created a new Facebook, 30 days to 2,500 bucks, and all the recorded sessions will be there, live with Banner, it's 29.95 per month, or 200 bucks lifetime access. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is, this is such a broad topic that's never gonna get stale. There are so many businesses, there are so many things, and I'm separating this from the main Hustle U, Hustle University deal, because I'm gonna probably close Hustle University to the people that are there very soon, but I'll send out emails. Because I've noticed something with my Facebook groups. Uh, the storage auction group I closed maybe two years ago, everyone's still in it, and there's a ton of participation, because it's small and intimate. You know, I'm not this big numbers guy, like, you know, we gotta get the 5,000, no. You can do very well with a few dozen people or a few hundred people, and the group stays gives out good information because every day someone's putting out something positive or helpful to the other members and since they're an intimate group there's a lot more trust there than when every day there's this new person that's popping in this new person that's popping in so it's 502 i've actually gone way over time so what i'm going to do is shut this down what i will do is send out an, an email every day i send out an email to with a link to the next webinar so if you're on the list you're going to get that email and I will include all the information for this. So with that, this is Glendon. Thanks everyone that came out. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you on the good side. The organizer has ended the session and this call will be disconnected.